the legal fees, they got worse and worse. And I'm back in the hospital again. And I'm in the hospital for a couple of weeks. And every time I go into the hospital, I don't know if I'm coming out. And every time I go to bed at night, I don't know if I'm going to wake up in the morning. I'm telling you, I had chest pain. And I thought I was going to die. And they told me I was going to die. And I believed them. And I, there's this doctor. He says to me, hey, Bill, remember I'm in Jersey Hospital, so I'm in Jefferson. And he says, give me a shot at this. I think I can fix it. And I was like, what? That, that's his pitch? <laughs> give me a shot at this. Give me a yeah. shot at this. I think I can fix it. And I was like, what? His name is Dr. Zinn. I come to find out later, he's fixing hearts all over South Jersey. This guy's amazing. I just, you know, happened right. to be my cardiologist that day. And I'm like, okay. So we go, he said, he, I agree. He's like, you're going to have to sign off on everything because it's a high risk operation. And um, we're at Cooper Hospital in Camden. That's where he feels comfortable doing the operation. And the staff comes down from like risk management at the hospital and they're telling me everything. They have to tell me everything that could go wrong with the operation. Right. I'm like, okay. And it's not comforting. Behind them is the staff, the doctors and the nurses that are going to perform the operation. And they're like, okay, you understand that if they, your artery could tear and you would bleed, bleed out right away. And I'm like, uh, no, I didn't know that, but okay. And they're in the background going, don't worry, Bill, I know when to stop. And I'm like, <laughs> what? it was like a cheering out. And I'm like, all right, I would never do that to you, Bill. So, I'm like, well, you know, they told me I had an 80% chance at this. I'm, that's pretty good odds. I've already made up my mind to do it. They, they, you don't even have a 30% chance. I'm like, what? And they're like, you don't have a 30% chance and you can walk out of here right now. And I'm like, well, what happens if I walk? Well, you might live another six months. You might not. But at the time I had the, the option and I said, no, I I, I can't live like this. I, I want to try it and then an operation that should have taken two and a half hours took them about six and i'm under there and they, it was like they were playing music i remember um how you gonna do it if you really don't want to dance by standing on the wall get your back up off i heard all of people and they were like get down on it and they were like operate they had it was like something you would see on television and he was just so proud of himself when they went in a vein in my left leg, a vein in my right leg, and they went up and met in the middle, and they turned and they untwisted the artery and then punched the blockage through, put two stints in my heart, and I walked out of there the next day. Wow. Brand new beer. I ordered everybody pizza at the, at the nursing station because I don't want to eat their food, and I'm ready to go home. And... uh. It was a miracle. It was a miracle. Uh, so God's performing miracles in my lives and my life and got me sober. That was divine intervention. I take no credit for that and saw, solved my health issues, fixed my health. So now I have my strength back. All right. So now, now you're f with the wrong person. All right? all right. I got my health back. All right. I can go 10 a.m. to midnight. All right. And you're not going to push me around anymore. I haven't done anything wrong. And you're going to find out what's up. So I'm better. This is what I'm thinking. So my father is having trouble with some of his medications and it's lowering his blood pressure. It's called memetine for dementia. So when he would get up out of bed or go from a sitting to a standing position, 
he would feel woozy or he might fall. So we take him to urgent care, put him in the hospital, and the hospital said um, that he just needs to. We're gonna look, we're gonna adjust his medication for him. Prior to that, I'm getting threatened by my sister, her husband. This never ends. This goes on every two or three weeks. You're a piece of shit. Get out of the house. We want daddy and assisted living. Oh, this never ends. But now is there, I don't reason, know. is there a specific reason that they're saying? why he should be in an assisted living when he wants to be in his own home? All they ever said was, we want to sell off his assets. We want to liquidate his assets. That's why. They never said, because we think his care would be better there, because he wasn't an invalid. He was doing fine. I mean, we'd have to remind him when to eat and stuff like that, but right. it's not like he couldn't walk around. And... He would still go to mass with us, you know, he was still functioning. So, but the but between the FBI, between the New Jersey AG, the threats, the phone calls, you gotta understand what this is doing to my wife, man. She's not made for this, and neither am I, to be honest with you. I'm not made for this. She's crying, upset. She's afraid the guy's gonna come down and hurt me, Jim Roller. And nothing, we're not going to be able to do anything about it because he's a captain with the New Jersey State Police. So finally, I call my sister and I say, look, my wife Karen said, maybe they can do a better job taking care of them than us. So they said, we won't put him into assisted living. We're going to bring daddy into our home. And I was like, all right, we'll try that then. So, but they hate, they're saying they hate my gut so much that for me to give them a date that I'm going to leave the house and they will come that day and get daddy. Okay. So I talked to my father and I say, dad, you know, the FBI, the, I mean, something bad is going, I mean, we can't take this anymore, dad, you know? So. He says, he talks to my sister and says, okay, I'm going to live with Susan, Bill. I'm like, okay. So he was feeling, we, we give them a date, which is, I'm going to say, let's say today's Tuesday, and it was next Thursday, not this Thursday, but next Thursday. This, we're gonna call. We're gonna call movers. We're gonna get all our stuff out because you know all my stuff is there. My furniture, all the electronics, everything, and um, and we're gonna move. And um, my dad's okay with it. I wanted to make sure he was okay with it. So, and he didn't need to go into assisted living either. If they had left us alone, he could have lived his life out in that house. He wasn't he wasn't in poor health. He, he had trouble with his mind, but he wasn't in poor physical health. So we take him to urgent care on Thursday. And remember, I'm leaving a week from Thursday. Right. And urgent care says, we're going to adjust his medication. This is why he's feeling woozy and stuff like this. And I think he's nervous, too, about the change that's going to take place. So I said to the doctors at the hospital, we're turning my father over to my sister's care a week from today anyway. So... Why don't you discharge him to her and it'll give us a chance to clean up the house, get our stuff out, leave it in good condition. And I get a call from a social worker that says, your sister said your father's not welcome there, not now, not ever. And I'm like, what are you talking about? She's supposed to go there on Thursday. Well, Steve's power of attorney 
And do you want me to call her and say something to her? And I was like, well, yeah, of course. Like, what are you talking about? You know, just these two, they're, they're incredibly disgusting people, right? Just, it's your father. It's our father. And the social worker, I don't know what the social worker said to my sister, but that night I received resignation of power of attorney. And the previous power of attorney automatically transferred it to me if she resigned or became incapacitated or died or something. That's how it was written up. So it went automatically to me. Okay. All the legal stuff has been done prior to any diagnosis of dementia. Okay, this is how they wanted it. Okay, but you want to be power attorney, be power. I don't care. I'm still going to take care of dad. He's my father. So that night, dad he gets out of bed and goes to use the restroom and fell and broke his hip because he didn't give himself enough time from the sitting to the standing position. Back to the hospital again. He, Dad has a, a, a successful hip operation, but he needs to go to Morristown Paraback Rehab to rehabilitate his hip. This is under COVID. Um, you can't, you have to wear masks. You're not allowed in certain facilities. I only, only when he was in the hospital, only a family member could go see him. Like you can't have guests. There's restrictions under COVID. Right. So he goes to Morristown Power Back Rehab by ambulance. And I, I called Morristown Power Back Rehab. We had already scheduled movers. And now he can't move because now I'm power of attorney and he's no longer going to go to her house. He's going to stay in his own home. And so I call the facility and they say he can't get gas. It's closed for COVID. You're not allowed to have any visitors. And at the time, COVID was ravaging our seniors. It, 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 that's what it affected. It affected pe elderly people. It killed off more of them than anybody else. So you could not have visitors at that facility. That's it. So my wife and I, we had always maintained my place in Florida, and we decided to go take a break. It's very hard to take care of another person. So we go on vacation to Florida. And a couple weeks later, I get a call from my friend who says, Susan and Jim and their kids and their son is a police officer as well, are emptying out the contents of your home. And I'm like, what are you talking about? I found out later, but what they did was they had, he used his position as a captain went to New Jersey State Police and had them open it up so that they, he could sign power of attorney back over to them, realized that we weren't in the house, that we were on vacation, went to the house with a locksmith, went in and began removing all the belongings. I'm freaking out. Everything I own is there. Matthew, could you imagine? I'm going to go on vacation. What do you bring? You have shorts and t-shirts. Right. I mean, granted, it was our place there, but, you know, I didn't have any, you know, maybe I brought a laptop with me, you know, like I didn't, we wouldn't move. Everything was in New Jersey. That was my residence. So I call the police. And I should say this before I called the police, I can still talk to my father before I found out they were emptying out the contents of my home and i was like dad when you say your home you mean your father's residence where you were my staying. father's residence okay but it was my residence too no i i know that but you also said you have a home in florida i do i i always maintained a home in florida and um 
I grew up in that home. You know what I mean? It's my childhood home. Right. When I moved in in 2016, I moved into my old room. I saw tennis trophies, football trophies. It was like a museum. I was like, this is my bedroom from when I was 17. This is, I saw my yearbook. You know, it was, it was hilarious. So I'm talking to my dad prior to this, and he says, I don't want to go to assisted living, Billy. I want it. I want a chance to come home. And I'm like, well, Dad, if you come home with this hip, it's a three-story home, basically. Right. We need to have you on one floor. We need to put a shower in, and we'll move your office up to the dining room, and we'll move your bedroom set to the living room. And then we have a family room, a kitchen, and an outside deck so you can go outside and get air because you're not going to be able to do the stairs with the hip. So, if this is what you want to do, it's going to cost a lot of money, and they've destroyed my business. So, he says, yes, this is what I want to do. I'm power of attorney. He had left me sign checks anyway. I never took any money off. My father, I didn't need to. I didn't want to. And um, I start calling around, and it's going to cost like 30, 40 grand to uh, put in a new bathroom shower that very expensive uh so i withdraw i think it was thirty two thousand from his account and i figure that's going to cover it and now we're getting estimates because he's going to be released and i want to make sure that the work is done so that he can come home and we'll have everything ready for him so that's when i find out from my friend that my sister and her husband and her son are emptying out the contents of my home. What are you doing? You're not power of attorney. You resigned his power of attorney. Daddy wants to come home because my thinking is this. I don't want him in assisted living. He's going to die in assisted living. You need him home to be around other people so that, you know, you can function and and I didn't want him to go in assisted living. I just didn't want it. I wanted him home. I wanted to take care of him. And my wife is a saint, and she treated him as if he was her own father, and she loved him, took care of him. So I call the cops, and I say, they're emptying out the contents of my home. Not only are they not allowed to do that, but it's COVID. There is an eviction moratorium. I can't go to my attorneys and say, go to a court, go to a judge, because they're all closed. I had to rely on the local police department and the sheriff's department to stop them. Captain New Jersey State Police. Right. My brother-in-law is stealing from old people. The FBI is investigating them. If you don't believe me, call Michael T. Walton. He'll tell you. He's going to go to prison. So they they refuse. So the local police refused to help. Not only that, they charged me with stealing from my father, taking that money out of his account. So I caught a case on it. I think that's the terminology. Right. I caught a case. <laughs> so I overnight the prosecutor. Her name is Jackie. I don't know how to pronounce it. C-H-A-B-A-N. Prior, I'm following charges against them, not the other way around. I'm pressing charges against them. You can't do this. It's under COVID. You're not allowed to evict someone, and I'm power of attorney. Who do you think you are? And there was a sheriff who asked me not to name his name, a detective with the Gloucester County Sheriff's Department, that said... He wanted to charge my sister and her husband with these crimes. And he brought it to the prosecutor, this Jackie Chabon. And she told them it was civil and they weren't going to pursue it. What I didn't know is a few days later, I was charged with taking money out of my father's account. I'm power of attorney. Right. I'm putting in the bathroom. I'm not paying rent with it. 